ever feel like, you know, some parts of what you believe are uh, more like those inspirational posters? Hmm. I like that. Yeah. Like love conquers all is a nice thought, but actually like living it. Right. That's the hard part. And that's kind of what we're that's where we're going today. Yeah. Yeah. Diving right into the thick of it. We are. So we've got these reflections from thickshades.com and they're not shying away from how tough this whole like real Christian love thing can be. Oh, absolutely not. And how rewarding it can be, too. It's a challenging concept. It really is. And it's not, you know, like just saying, oh, yeah, love is nice. This is like bedrock. This is supposed to include like your enemies even. Yeah. Which is. Which honestly sometimes feels impossible. Yeah. It's definitely not an instinct, right? To just. Love Good your show. enemy. But what's interesting here is how the source connects that, like, directly to what it means to even be a Christian, you know. It's not just yeah. about what you believe, but it's like a whole life change. Okay, so how does that look different from me just saying, I believe in love? Well, they start with, like, breaking down Jesus' greatest commandment, right? right? That yeah. whole, love God with everything, love your neighbor as yourself. Which sounds simple. It does, until you remember who your neighbor is sometimes. Exactly. Then the source, like, really points that out. Loving your best friend, that's easy. Right. Loving someone who's hurt you. Ooh, yeah. That's that's where it gets real, doesn't that's it? That's the rubber meets the road moment, yeah. Big time. Because our instinct, like, as humans, is to avoid pain, not mm -hmm. to run towards it by loving the people who cause it. It makes sense, though, right? Like, evolutionarily, why would we do that? Totally. But then, and this is where it gets really interesting, they bring up Romans 12.1721. Okay. Which is offering some, like, guidance for those situations. So, like, I'm picturing, I don't know, getting cheated on. Right. And then this verse is telling me uh, to bake a cake. Right. Right. Like, what do you do with that? What's the actual takeaway there? It's about resisting that that urge to, to get back at them, to yeah. retaliate. Yeah. And not because you're, like, weak or anything, but because there's a bigger picture happening. All right. Divine justice, as they put it. Okay, so I don't have to, like, personally deliver the karma. Exactly. Okay, I can get behind that. But that still feels very abstract. Like, so let's say a coworker like, totally takes credit for your idea. Ugh, the worst. Instead of, you know, plotting their downfall. Right. How do you feed your enemy in that context? It's yeah. not literal. Right. It's not about ordering them a piece necessarily. It's more about that internal shift. Mm -hmm. So not inviting them to dinner, but maybe instead of seeing them as like this evil person, maybe you can see some insecurity there oh. or an opportunity to like help them on the next project, even if it stings a little. Ouch. Right. Yeah. But it's those opportunities to actually like show genuine care when you least feel like it. So radical love isn't being walked all over. It's just playing a different game entirely. Yeah. It's interrupting that whole cycle of negativity. And, you know, the source is quick to point out they mess this up, too. Oh, good. No one's claiming to be perfect here. Yeah. But they use the most extreme example to show, like, how high the bar is set. Which is drumroll. Jesus on the cross. Yeah. Praying for the people killing him. Yeah. Okay. And it's not to make us feel bad, but if that's the model of love in action, it kind of changes things, doesn't it? Okay. That's a lot to process. So how do we, I don't know, bridge that gap, right, between, like, messing up a dinner reservation in that, that? That's a big leap. Huge. Asking for a friend, obviously. Well, the good news is they admit this is a process. You know, like it's not about suddenly being perfect at this. It's those small choices every day to actually try. They even say, like, they struggle with that turning the other cheek thing. Which, thank goodness, because same. Like, it's one thing to talk about it in theory, but when someone cuts you off in traffic or whatever. It's a totally different story. It's different, yeah. And that's where I think that whole bigger picture thing comes in, you yeah. know? Like we don't always see the full story. So less about letting people walk all over me, more about trusting that, I don't know, someone's got this. Exactly. We're not saying what they're doing is okay. Yeah. But that we can respond differently. Sometimes the most loving thing, I ask to step back, not try to control everything. Okay. So less immediate payback, more playing the long game. I can get with that. But how? How do we actually DO radical love day to day? It doesn't have to be like... 
these huge e gestures, right? It could be being nice to that coworker who's always a pain or, you know, actually listening when someone who's hurt you in the past is talking. So those little things, they add up to something bigger. It's that conscious effort, mm-hmm. you know, to not be all about mim and the hurt, but about what they might need. Yeah. And that's what's wild. When you start doing that, it kind of... It changes things. There's a ripple effect. Ooh, ripple effect. Tell me more. Like when you meet, I don't know, anger with compassion, It throws people off, breaks down those walls instead of building them higher. So instead of adding fuel to the fire, you're like trying to be the water. (laughs) And who knows, maybe in those little moments, those little acts of love, you surprise yourself and other people. It's not easy, but that's where the real change happens, I think. It's like contagious almost, isn't it? This radical love idea. Maybe it is. Like tapping into something bigger than just us. And when you do that, I don't know, it can really change things. Not just like between people, but the whole world even. So as we wrap up here, listener, what if, Yeah. what if instead of always needing to be right, we tried this, this radical love thing? Whoa, that's a big one to think about (laughs) because it makes you look at yourself, right? Like why do we always have to win? It's hard, right? To let go of that. It is. But, you know, the source seems to say there's a freedom in that too, if you can actually do it. And maybe even more importantly, like it puts you closer to, well, Christ right. Because that's what this whole thing is about, isn't it? Trying to live out that kind of love. Totally. And hey, we might not get it perfect, you know. Ah. But it's got to be worth aiming for, right? Absolutely. And who knows? Maybe it's in those little moments, those little forgivenesses and kindnesses. That's where you see it. Something really amazing. Something much bigger than us. Well, this has definitely given me a lot to think about. And listener, we hope it's done the same for you. Until next time.